The Bible declares that God is just. That God judges impartially. And that's pretty amazing because politicians are corrupt. I'm a politicians are unjust. But when God judges, He judges justly, impartially. That way, sir, if God sends you to hell, He's just in judging you and sending you to hell. And you see, here's the problem. God cannot justify you. God cannot forgive you and be just. The Bible says that he who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both of them alike are an abomination to the Lord. That means that, that God is righteous and man is evil. That's what the Bible declares about you guys, that you are dead in trespasses and sins. The Bible says in Psalms 5 that God hates all workers of iniquity. He doesn't just hate the sin. He hates the sinner. But Jesus Christ died in your law place on that tree under the fierce wrath of God the Father, under His holy hatred for you and your sin. Jesus Christ died in your law place. It says in John chapter 3, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever will believe in God in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. It says of Jesus that He made, that Jesus was the propitiation of our sins, and not just for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. The word propitiation means satisfaction. The wrath of God was satisfied on His Son on that cross. So on that cross 2,000 years ago, God Christian, Christian, what kind of Christian? His Son, Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh, He did that for you. He did that for me. It says uh, that, that Jesus Christ uh, died in your law place, that He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Your sin, your wickedness for His righteousness at the cross. Righteousness and peace have met together. Mercy and truth have kissed at the cross of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. But you guys are born in sin. You guys are immersed in sin. I beg you guys today that we are filled with all kinds of sexual morality, you guys. Sex outside marriage is a sin, you guys. Homosexuality is a sin, you guys. Is a sin, you guys. Is a sin. Don't drop that, bro. Hang on. Is a sin. Anger is a sin. Malice is a sin. Covetousness is a sin. These are sins, you guys. Have you ever gossiped or talked about someone behind your back? That's a sin. Have you ever slandered somebody's character? That's a sin, you guys. Jesus said, that's right, sir, by the blood of Jesus Christ alone, Jesus said that, that if you... Hold on, sir. You're looking at God. No, you're not God, sir. Okay, here is what it says. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, you guys. You're all guilty. You all stand today guilty before a holy God. And the just judge of the earth will do right. He will be just in judging you. He will be just in sending you to hell. I want you to know that one of the biggest fallacies is that if you pray a prayer to ask Jesus to come into your heart, that he will definitely come in. You will find that nowhere in scripture. And you will find that nowhere in church history until about 60 years ago. What you need to understand is salvation comes by faith alone in Jesus Christ. And that faith is immediately followed and preceded by repentance. A turning away from the things that God hates. A love for the things that God loves. Not to be like the world. Not to be like Britney Spears. But to be like Jesus Christ. To put off anger. To put off wrath. To put off unforgiveness. To put off drunkenness. To put off sexual immorality. Sex outside marriage. Homosexuality. Lust pornography, to turn from that stuff, for that, those things the, the righteous judge of the earth is going to judge the living and the dead, you guys as Enoch prophesied the Lord is going to come back with ten thousands of insane, to judge the world because of their ungodliness, because of their unrighteousness, you guys have suppressed the truth in exchange for a lie because you hate God by nature you guys, you're no more looking for God than a criminal is looking for a police officer it says of Jesus that he came into his own, and his own did not receive him. But many has received him, and then he gave right to become children of God, you guys. I beg you today, the Bible declares that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved, you guys. Jesus Christ said, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now repent therefore and believe in the gospel. The word repentance means to have a change of mind.
remind you guys to turn away from the sin you now love, to embrace the righteousness of God you now hate. That's the reality. You hate God. You do not love God. You love your idea who, of who God is, but you do not love the true God of Scripture. But Christ died for the ungodly. God demonstrates His own love towards you, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We have to turn from our sin, sir. We have to repent from our sin. We have to turn and embrace God. I'll keep going. God is a holy God, you guys. That means that God is set apart. That means that God is pure. If I were to ask you, what is closer to God, an archangel or a caterpillar? The answer is neither, because both an archangel and a caterpillar are created beings. Yet God has no beginning. God has no end. It says in Psalm 90, verse 2, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You see, friends, God is not quantitatively different than you. He is qualitatively different than you. There is none like the Lord. None at all. You have no idea what God is like. You can't comprehend what God is guys. like. He is infinite. You are finite. You are limited creatures. You have an origin. Yet God has no beginning. God has no end. But He's also pure. He's undefiled. He, is, he does not wear out. Uh, our clothes, they get mobbed, they, they wear out, they, they get destroyed, our cars, they get rust, they wear down. Yet God does not change, He does not fade away like a garment. It says in the Bible, I am the Lord God, I change not. But God is not only holy, He's righteous. That means that God is without sin. And get this, because God is holy and He's pure and defiled, not only is God without sin, but God hates sin. God can't tolerate sin. You're not to force your religion on any man. I, sir, I'm up here preaching the gospel. You can you talk to not. Jonathan if you want. He'll kind of answer your questions. God hates sin, you guys. You are not God, to force, God, you are not to force your religion on to any man. God hates sin, you Keep guys. Going, buddy. Keep God going. Hates you are sin. not to force your beliefs on to any man. Okay, sir. Let him. LeBron James. God. Listen, Impossible. God, you are not to force your beliefs yes, onto any man. Hey, God mic? bless God. Hey, Jesus Christ, I like God hates sin. He is undefiled. He is pure. Me, and he is with God. God hates force. God hates force. It doesn't matter, Jake. God hates sin. God hates sin. He is undefiled. He is pure. And he's righteous. He can't tolerate sin. So God is holy, God is righteous, and God is just. That means that God judges impartially. That means that when God judges you, He is just in doing so, you guys. I beg you today, God is holy, God is righteous, and God is just. But you guys are not. That's the problem. We have all sinned. The Bible says for all that sin and fall short of the glory of God, that every thought and intent of the heart of man is only evil continually. Let me read you 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Do not be deceived, you guys. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Look at what it says in, in Corinthians chapter 6. It says, it says, uh, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God, you guys. You have to turn from those sins, you guys. Those are sins that God hates. Your very nature affects them. Your very nature affects the Holy God. You need God. You guys need God tonight. You don't need the you don't need the religion. You don't need your money. You don't need your riches. You don't need your fame or your popularity. You don't need your career. God, you need God, you guys. You need the righteous judgment of God. I beg you guys to turn to me in wicked ways. You guys hate me because you hate God. That's the problem. I beg you guys to turn from your sin. Yes, he did, sir. Uh, sir, you need God. You need God, sir. You hate God. That's your problem. You hate God. Sir, you're arrogant. You need, a, you need to make it right with the Holy God. You're judging him. Why are you judging him? judging you, sir. You need God tonight. You need God this morning. You need God this evening. You can't live without God. 
Do not be deceived, you guys. The righteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life to Christ Jesus our Lord. I beg you guys to turn from your wicked ways. The Bible says, if you will repent and believe in the gospel, you shall be saved. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I beg you today. John chapter 3, for God to love the world that he did. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Son, Jason, I don't know what to tell you. That whose son will leave it on will not perish, but have a right. I'm going to be out here selling hot dogs with a megaphone for that one. That they, 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 they say you can't. Sin, okay. And these sins for us, so we might be I'm not kidding. You guys, you need Jesus.